guys, welcome to Physics at Home today. Today, uh, we're gonna look into forces. So obviously forces are a huge part of physics. They're the reason why things happen the way they do around us. So we need to figure out a way to measure forces. In class, you're probably used to using something called a force meter or a Newton meter. And that's a device you would use that you could pull. And when you pull on it, you can read like a ruler, a Newton's off of it. So we need to do something at home that will allow us to kind of come up with a force meter on our own. And interestingly enough, a really easy force meter is actually an elastic band. So Robert Hooke did some research and figured out that the amount of stretch is directly related to the force being applied to it. So if I know what forces I am applying to this object, then I'm gonna be able to measure the stretch and knowing the stretch and the force, I can then graph that relationship and come up with something called a spring constant. So every elastic band will have its own spring constant and that spring constant will be based off of something that's either really stiff or maybe something that's really easy to stretch out. So what you're gonna need is basically an elastic band. So um, I'm lucky that I had like a bag that we had gotten from the dollar store a while ago. So I have a ton of elastic bands in my house. If you don't have an elastic band in your house, then you're more than welcome to go ahead and start digging through maybe some hair elastics, that kind of stuff. If you can't find a hair elastic, then the other object that you could use um, if you had pants you were planning on donating or just were like garbage. Um, if they have like a spring or an elastic give to the pants, you could cut your pants apart and pull the elastic out of it. Um, and then worst case scenario, next time someone goes grocery shopping in your family, you can get them to buy you some broccoli because broccoli typically has elastic bands around the base of it. So to set up our demonstration or our lab today, essentially what you're gonna do is you're gonna set up some kind of way to have this elastic band hang. So what I've got is a bunch of cookbooks because those are heavy textbooks or heavy books in our house. You're more than welcome to use like textbooks, that kind of stuff, any way you want and have it hang. Um, this is actually a hanger placed in between my top two books here so that I just have an easy way to hang something off my elastic band. Now I will warn you that initially I had thought that a better force meter would be kind of these fatter elastics, but I found that they don't actually stretch that much. You have to really apply a strong force to really get them to stretch. So when we're doing some of the activities in the coming uh, videos, you'll actually find that the amount of force you apply isn't that great. So I do want something that visibly stretches so that I can physically see how much it's changed. Because if I can't see, like if it only deforms a millimeter, it'll be really hard for me to figure that out. But if it's stretching like two to three centimeters, then visually I can see that really easily. The other thing that I've done here is I have a ruler. So this is actually from my sewing kit upstairs. Um, so I have one of those like flexible rulers. You're more than welcome to use your like standard ruler and just have it leaning against here. If you didn't grab a ruler before you left school because you didn't realize you were going to be off for so long, you're also more than welcome to just print one off or even worst case scenario if you needed to, you could just pull one up on a visual on your computer, lay a piece of paper over top of it and trace one. Yes, it may not be exact and a centimeter wouldn't be a centimeter, but if you use the same ruler over and over again in all your experiments that you're using this elastic band with, that bias in your ruler will actually be built in and it will then kind of negate itself as you go through all of your experiments. All right, so let's build our force meter. So a force meter, basically, I'm just gonna use something I can pull on, and then when I pull on it, I can see it stretches. So obviously, when I apply a force, it's gonna stretch. So how do we apply known forces so that we can figure out the stretches? Pretty much the easiest way is to hang it so then we know the force of gravity is the only force acting on it, and that force of gravity that is causing that elastic band to stretch. So for this one, we are gonna need exact masses. If you're lucky, you may have a scale in your kitchen that you use to weigh food. And so then what you can do is use these ones because they'll give you some masses in grams because we're probably looking at masses, ideally probably in the zero to one kilogram range. So your scale that you use in your bathroom to weigh yourself in the morning isn't gonna be accurate enough in this case. What happens if you don't have a scale that has accuracy? Then my recommendation is you hang things with known masses. So for example, a lot of you probably have some kind of coin currency. So what you can do is you can actually just Google, and then for me, I'm in Canada, this is a quarter. So if you Google the mass of one quarter, then I know how much one quarter is. So then I can go dig up a bunch of change, tape them all together, and then if I have, for example, 20 quarters as my mass, then when I got my 20 quarters taped together, I know approximately how much mass is hanging from this. And then I can change it, maybe hang five quarters, 10 quarters, 20 quarters, 50 quarters, or whatever 
system you feel needs to get a couple pieces of data. So essentially what you're gonna need to do this experiment is some way of hanging your elastic band, some way of measuring how much stretch the elastic band is having, and some variable in terms of masses to hang from it. So you'd be looking at ideally probably five different objects to hang from your mass. What I've done to make myself a little bit easier is I have deformed a paper clip. So I just had a standard paper clip, deformed it just to make a hook here so that I can be able to figure stuff out. So what I've done is I've taken just an Easter egg from my kids' collection and I've actually filled it up with a bunch of these jewels. Uh, these are like the little decorative things that you would find in like flower stores and that kind of stuff. And then I've been able to weigh it and then find my known mass. So what I'll do is I'll take a look here and kind of, if you wanted to, you could use a pen, you could use your finger, whatever system you want to do, and just kind of mark when your, your elastic band is just like completely flattened out, how far along this line is it, okay? And then what you're going to do is you can mark that then with a pencil or a pen or something like that, maybe a washable marker, and then what you'll do is you'll hook your mass on, hang it, and then what you'll do is then you'll mark now its current bottom position. And the difference between where it started and where it finished, or its displacement, is going to then give you um, how much your X value is, or your change, or your stretch was for this particular case. So I know my force, because that's the force of gravity. I know my stretch. And then if I get a bunch of data points, I'll be able to graph it. And then that will give me my K value, or my spring constant, for this particular elastic band. And this is actually Hooke's Law. If you're looking at doing Hooke's Law, then that's great and you can stop from there. If you need it as a force meter, then what you've got now is a calibrated force meter so you know how much it stretches. So then in other experiments, when you do them and you pull on your elastic band, you know relationship between how much stretch and how much force must be being applied. Because when we're pulling, this will now give us a visual cue to see how much we're pulling with. So anyways, I hope you have a great day. Enjoy some physics from home. 